Hello, everybody, and welcome to the United Stand. I am joined with Fabrizio Romano. Fabrizio, it's great to have you back on the show. My pleasure, as always. Thank you. Yeah, and let's get straight into it, because obviously a few things have happened since you've last been on, as we always say. But we'll start off with the right-back situation. Ten Hag spoke about it openly after the game against West Ham, saying he also needs a left-back and a right-back because of the amount of games coming up. Who are United looking at in January? Are they looking at bringing a right-back in? And is there any names that you can give to us? Yes, yes. Um, I think Eritanag was pretty clear. They need a right back and I think it's absolutely correct because it's always, always Diogo Dalot. He's doing great, but uh, it can't be only Diogo Dalot for the world season. And so it's normal to look at the right back market. Um, it's not easy, first of all, because it's not easy to find important players in January. So Jeremy Frimpong is a name I mentioned in the last few days because Manchester United have sent their scout multiple times to follow this player, not just Manchester United, for example, also Chelsea and other clubs. But Man United will send their scouts again in the next weeks to, to monitor this player. Uh, he's considered an important player for present and future. But there is Bayer Leverkusen. They're really happy with him. And it's not easy to sign that kind of player in January. So let's see about the price and let's see about the potential negotiation. Jeremy Frimpong is not the only player because I'm told that there are also other potential options that they are exploring. We know, as we mentioned here many times, that Eric Hag wanted Serginho Dest at the end of the summer market. And then it was not possible to complete the deal because of one Bissaka. So the first First step is to find a solution for Juan Bissaka. To find a solution, we will see which, which kind of formula they will find for, for Juan Bissaka, if it's a loan, if it's a permanent transfer. But Man United are trying to find a, a solution for him. And then in January, to, to find a player at Man United level for the new right back position. But it doesn't change the future of Diogo Dalot. The priority for Man United on Diogo Dalot remains. They want to discuss him with him on a new long term deal. Uh, otherwise, I expect them to trigger the close for uh, a contra extension till 2024. But right back position is one of the potential new signings for Man United in general. Yeah, I definitely think we need to get Dallow on a new contract. He's doing so well at the moment. I think everyone is... I mean, we knew he was a good player, but he's he's doing so well, what we expected from him from the start. So it's really good to see. And But yeah, we do need competition there. But also competition, we need we need a striker desperately. I think a lot of Man United fans can agree on that, especially with Ronaldo's future. I mean, we're not sure what's going to happen there. But is a striker also on the cards for January potentially, especially with Gakpo being likely and... Will there be much competition for him in January? Because it seems like he possibly might leave then. Yes, the Gakpo situation has really changed uh, in the last few few weeks. Uh, we remember in August, end of August, we had Leeds, Southampton fighting till the end to sign him. Now on player side, they expect something different. They expect a top move for, for Cody Gakpo. Uh, he's still not decided if it will be January or summer. It depends on the on the proposals. It depends on the bids for PSV and Dovan too, because it's true that Gakpo is waiting for a big move, but it's also about the club. And so we have to see who's going to pay that money. I think the World Cup is going to be important to understand uh, and to see also Gakpo gain on the international stage. But for sure, there are many clubs interested, and May United included. Uh, we know how May United were in talks with his agents and non-players side uh, in August and July, but then they decided to go big for Anthony, so there was not a direct negotiation between PSV and Bay United, but they remain interested in Cody Gakpo. They are among clubs that are following Cody Gakpo. Uh, I repeat, it's not easy in uh, in January to go for that kind of player, to invest that kind of money, especially because we know that Bay United remain focused on, on summer transfer window, as always they, they say, but Eric Ten Hag wants the club to be ready on that position, on the striker position. Cody Gakpo is appreciated. His agents are the same agents as Eric Ten Hag, and so Bay United are in the race for sure but again it's not only May United it's an open situation and the World Cup will be really important to understand about about Cody Gakpo and I think uh, it's going to be really important in general for strikers because I always mention here Jonathan David as an interesting striker for many clubs including May United potentially but the World Cup will be important for him with Canada to see He's level also in this kind of competitions because in the gun he's doing fantastic, but many clubs are monitoring him. And so the World Cup will be a really important moment for many of these players, including Gakpo, Jonathan David, to understand, first of all, their level in, on international stage and then to see what happens in general. Is, the truth, is there any truth in his price tag being the 30 million? I've seen that being reported. For I think Gakpo. it's a bit more than this. I think it's a bit more, more than, than this. It's around... Um, 40, 45 in the summer, it was around 45. I think now with 40, 45, there is a negotiation for, for Cody Gakpo for sure. Yeah, I mean, it seems it seems likely considering what we paid for Anthony as well. I mean, you don't make it easy for clubs when you pay that kind of money. But on keeping on the strikers, do you think United might also maybe go for an out-and-out -out number nine in the summer? Obviously, there's Osimhen, there's Tony, there's Sick, and you've talked about 
Jonathan David yourself then? Or do you think if we get Cody Gakpo, that will eliminate us going for a striker? Or do you think maybe both might happen? No, I think May United in the summer will, will try to find a traditional striker, I would say a number nine. So uh, Cody Gakpo is a fantastic player, but he's a kind of different striker. Uh, I think mm-hmm. they need a traditional number nine. Uh, from what I'm told now, it's normal to deny now, but uh, I'm told that in the summer, the last summer, they wanted uh, Darwin Nunez and then Liverpool had uh, the agreement with Benfica and with the player, thanks to an important proposal, but May United were in the race for Darwin Nunez till the end. And so that kind of striker, traditional number nine, also with Barcelona injuries, with the Cristiano Ronaldo situation, I think is something that will be the priority for May United. They decided to save some money this summer on that position because they invested big on Casemiro, on Anthony and other positions, on Lisandro, of course, but they need a center striker for present and future. And I think they will be they will be in the race. I still remember they were really interested in Benjamin Sesco. He will go to Red Bull Leipzig, of course, but uh, they wanted that kind of player, a center striker, an important striker. And I think it will be a priority in the summer because in January it's difficult to find that kind of player. Yeah, definitely. I think it is it is massively needed and, and especially with what's going on with Ronaldo. But obviously, since last time we spoke, he left the pitch early, was suspended, he's came back, he started both games and he scored one goal as well. So what is the situation now and what's the situation on his future? Is a move in January what's best for everybody and where potentially is possible for him to go in January as well? First of all, I want to say one thing that from what I'm told internally at Manchester United, they are really, really happy on how Eric and Hag managed the situation yeah. because it was a really difficult situation. And from what I'm told, people into the club they were already convinced that he's the right man to rebuild Man United, as we mentioned many times. But how he managed this kind of situation, and he had a very important career with Ajax, of course, but with Man United is different. The pressure you have, uh, Cristiano Ronaldo is a legend of football, and so it was not easy to manage that kind of situation. But they're convinced into the club that he was absolutely perfect. Also, to have some respect of the of the group, and so how they manage the situation, the club and Cristiano, and of course, Ritten Hag has been something really, really important for the, for the manager. I think he has a big credit for that. And um, about the market, uh, for sure, Jorge Mendes is still, is still trying to find solutions around. For sure, he knows that find a solution would be probably the best way for, for Cristiano and Man United. But the reality is of today, the end of October, is that there are no advanced negotiations with any club as of now. So uh, I still see many, many links to, to Chelsea, to Bayern, to Napoli, but nothing is happening with these clubs as of today. Uh, so, Do Man United want to let him go? Yeah, I would assume so. But I'm, I'm sure that Man United, if they let him go, they need to find a new striker because yeah. otherwise they will keep Cristiano Ronaldo the club mm-hmm. for sure. So it's a domino. It's not just that they won't let Cristiano go. It's that they have to find an important striker to replace Cristiano. So it's not that easy. I know that in that moment after the Tottenham game, the feeling was, okay, it's over. But it's not that easy to find a solution for Cristiano and to find a striker at Man United level in January. So it depends. If they will be able to find a solution to this domino, okay, it could be a possibility. But otherwise, I wouldn't be surprised if Cristiano at the end would stay at Man United till the end of the season. And then in the summer, they will sign a new striker. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see what happens on that one. And regarding the the goalkeeper, David De Gea, had a brilliant game last night. And we know that there's rumours about that we'd like to sign Porto keeper Costa. And no other big club are really in for a keeper at the moment. They seem to be happy with their keepers. So Manchester United seem to be looking at the market. Is that something that Manchester United is looking at? And what does that mean for David De Gea? Would we be looking for a new first choice goalkeeper? Yes, Man United are looking at the goalkeeper's market. Yes, um, they sent their scouts for uh, for Diogo Costa. He's considered the top goalkeeper, and so he's one of the players they are monitoring. So he's 100% true. At the same point, there is not a negotiation or a direct negotiation. So at the moment, it's not something advanced. Uh, I think we can mention Tottenham about other clubs looking for a goalkeeper because the Yori situation is something that they want to clarify for the future. But as of now, for Man United, it's an opportunity to go for, uh, for Diogo Costa. But there are no negotiations uh, while, we, while we speak. So let's see what happens in the future. Uh, as of now, the situation is still quiet. For David De Gea, he wants to stay. He's been very clear in public and his agents in conversations with Man United have been very clear that David would love to stay. Uh, and they know that it's up to Eric and Hack in this case. The answer they got from the board is that it's up to Eric and Hack. He was really positive in his words in the last few, few days about David De Gea. But we have to see, I think, during the World Cup. They will have kind of strategy during the World Cup for the players out of contract. So it's about Rashford, Dalot, of course, uh, De Gea and the others. And they will make decisions. 
So the guy is waiting, but he would love to stay. And at the moment, Man United are not negotiating to sign a new player in that position, a new goalkeeper. They are scouting goalkeepers, and it's normal for a top club, but they are not signing any goalkeeper yet. So it's still an open situation, and the guy has chances to stay, I think. Yeah, I assume Eric Ten Hag will look at how he's performed over the season and kind of make a decision maybe heading towards the summer and whether what he's going to do with that one. But yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether David Heyer does extend his contract or not. I think he will, but we'll have to wait and see. On Declan Rice, he spoke glowingly about Manchester United and Old Trafford yesterday after the game. Is he on United's radar anymore? Because we know he was a player that was on the radar before Eric Ten Hag came in. Is it changed now Eric Ten Hag is in? Is he still an option for United? I think after investing that money on Casemiro, uh, there is defensive midfielder. I think they will go big for Casemiro for the next one, two years as an important mm-hmm. player for Man United. So, honestly, my personal opinion is I don't see Man United investing 150 million on, on Declan Rice uh, in the same position where they invested 80, 90 million on, on Casemiro. But for sure, they've always been interested in Declan Rice. We know they've always been in the, in the mix with, uh, with Chelsea and many other clubs interested in, in Declan Rice. But again, on the right situation, we have to mention always West Ham. They want to keep him. They want to have him as an important player for the future. Many people are saying, OK, he's out of contract in two years. But yes, but they have an option to extend the contract for one more season. So West Ham feel protected on the Declan Rice situation. May United invested on Casemiro. He's now performing at an important level. He's adapting to English football, to new methods, new system, new manager. And so I think at the moment it's not something considered imminent internally in Manchester United. I see them really busy with the striker situation for the future. Mm-hmm. And lastly, Randy spoke out about last week about players he wanted to buy at United and Kunku, Murata, Diaz, who went to Liverpool. Is there any truth in, in what he was saying? Was he trying to push them players for United when he was there? Yes, as every manager, I would say. So every manager is make, mentioning names to the board and then it depends on the moments and depends on the price tags. It, I think it's absolutely normal. We know that Ralph Ragnick is very good with uh, talents and he knows talents very well, but it's also true that for Man United, some of these players were not available at that point. For example, Dusan Vlaovic is a player he wanted at Manchester United, but he wanted to go to Juventus. He wanted to play Champions League football and so it was impossible to compete with Juventus. I think also for Luis Diaz it was almost impossible to compete with Liverpool because of Champions League football. So there are many points uh, on on this kind of, of stories. I think the only one where they had the real possibility to sign the player with Ralf Ragnick is, uh, is Julian Alvarez, because Julian Alvarez is a player that Ralf Ragnick really wanted, and Man United decided not to proceed, and then he joined Manchester City. That was a real possibility for Man United, but they decided for different kind of strategy. Kunku is a player that Ralf Ragnick knows very well. Uh, he suggested his name to, to Man United board, but he was not available last January, and he was not available last summer too, because it's also true that Leipzig extended his contract with the release clause, and now Chelsea are in very advanced talks to sign him. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see whether Chelsea do get him. I think that is going to happen. And lastly, quickly, it, with De Jong, are Barcelona still looking to sell him? Yeah, are, are, um, looking towards January and summer, we know that they wanted to sell him. Are they still looking to do that? I think Barcelona will always be open to let him go in case they can save that salary. It's about the financial situation. And so Barcelona are absolutely open. Uh, we know that he has a very good relationship with Xavi because Xavi is happy with the young. He's always been happy with the young. But it's about the financial situation. So it's more about the board and the, and the president more than the manager. And so at the moment, they are still open. The point is that on Frankie's side, nothing has changed. He's still really focused on Barcelona and he's not changing his mind. So... Let's see uh, when he will change his mind. If he will change his mind, I will let you know. But at the moment, it's still the same. It's on thank Frankie, not com- on Barcelona. Yeah, thank you for coming on for it, Fabrizio. For I'm excited for January and hopefully we'll have more chats with you then and, and see what happens and obviously moving into the summer as well. But thank you so much for coming on and I'm sure everyone would love to hear your opinion. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you as always. Thank you for the invitation. I'll see you soon here. Thank you. See you later. Well, everybody, that was Fabrizio Romano talking everything to do with the January transfer window, also moving into the summer. We had to cut it a little bit short today because Fabrizio is a very busy guy. He has stuff that he has to do. So it was lucky that we got to have him on for 15 minutes to see what he had to say. And it was interesting what he did have to say. I'll start on the Gakpo thing. What I took from that, which is really, really important, is that even if Manchester United do get Gakpo in January, they would still be looking for a traditional number nine in the summer. And that's so, so important for me because when you look at Manchester United and you look at the situation we're in, with Ronaldo leaving, which he will leave, whether it is in January or whether it's in that in summer, Martial is made of glass. 
he isn't going to be able to be our number nine that we can rely on for season upon season. Even though I rate the player so highly and I think he'd flourish under Eric Ten Hag, he just is injury prone. So he can't be relied upon. Marcus Rashford is better from the left. We saw it again yesterday. I think from the left, he just offers so much more and he frees up space for that number nine. The number nine frees up space for him. I think it just works with him on the left, especially with the pace he has and the how good he is at dribbling as well and going at players. I just think he's better from the left. And then you look at Cody Gakpo. If we get him in, he's a forward player that could play that position like Rashford, but he also likes to come from the wings. So... Again, you're not getting a traditional number nine there and you're kind of lacking in that sense of someone who will be the traditional number nine striker that can play that role consistently. And I just think if we got Gakpo in, it'd be another player where we're saying, if he, especially if he's pl- if he's playing up front for us, it's kind of another situation where you're forcing a player into a position where he, he 100% can play up front, but it would be, be better to kind of see a traditional number nine there and you can rotate with the likes of Rashford, Gakpo, Sancho, Anthony, all brilliant, brilliant options. And then you're building a squad and then you're building a team that can can go through a season together and you have options that can fill in for each other. Right right now, if Ronaldo goes, you've got Martial who's, who's injury prone. You don't have anyone. In the future, if we have Gakpo and another number nine, you have Gakpo, you have that number nine, you have Rashford, you have all these options. And then you're looking at like Manchester City, who have similar type depth to what I'm talking about here. So looking at the forward situation, it seems like we're really short in the striker role, which we are. But at the same time, just a couple of signings can make us have really, really great depth. That I think is so important for Eriksen Hag for the way he wants to play. But... Yeah, I think I think it's exciting. I think it's for Manchester United, like Romano said, Jonathan David will be an interesting one in the World Cup. I know a lot of you guys like the look of him. I'm going to be honest, I've not seen him play that much. So I'm excited for the World Cup to kind of see his level, especially because he's playing in League One. You can never really judge someone too much. And then looking at the likes of Ozzyman, I think he's an unbelievable player. Do I think we'd be able to get him out of Napoli? Absolutely not. I think Napoli are doing very, very well. And Ozzyman, I think he'd be so expensive. His deal doesn't run out for quite a few years. I think it is. And then Tony, I think, is an option that Manchester United can definitely get done if we pay the right money. I think Brentford understand their position and would be open to selling him. But the only thing is, is is he a player that Eric Ten Hag is looking at? We've not had that confirmation yet. I tried to get it there, but we've not had that confirmation that it's someone that Eric Ten Hag is looking at. So we'll have to see what happens with that one. But I do think the World Cup moving into the summer is going to be so important when you look at that number nine. I still think we could get Gakpo in a right back in January, 100%. We, we were interested in Frimpong, like Romano said. Eric Ten Hag wanted Dest. It was obvious from the start that wan was not an option for him. And this is why I think the board are going to come to realise very soon that they should listen to the manager immediately and 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 work on these things and get them done. Because Eric Ten Hag is not the type of manager to be like, I really want Dest. I'm not going to play wan Let's make that happen. Sorry, Eric, we can't do that. wan we paid this much for him. We can't let him go for this cheap. The low move just isn't going to happen. So you're going to have to stick with wan He's shown he will not play him because he's not his player. He will just play Dallo, 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 Dallo which Dello has been brilliant, but that can't happen. So now in January, we're going to end up either selling wan for the same price we'd have got in the summer or even cheaper, or he's just going to end up on these loan moves until the contract starts to run, run down more. If Eriks and Haag want something, you really should just act on it. And I think the board are going to be learning that. But it's good to hear from Romano as well that people at the club are very, very happy with Eriks and Haag and how he's running the club and how he's dealing with things. And there is that respect there, which there should be always. But it seems like they're kind of coming to terms that Eric Ten Hag runs the show at Manchester United now. We have a manager that makes the decisions and they should, I honestly think they should just make sure that they do the best to make them happen from day dot. I understand with wan I understand not wanting to get a right back in because of wan is still there and his wages and everything. But in realistic terms, we should have just let him go to uh, go in the summer. I think Palace are interested, but I think it was only 15 million. I know we paid 50, but that's when the board needs to kind of look back and think, that was an Ollie signing. That was a mistake. Let's just cut our losses now and do our best for the new manager. And it saves the toxicity because I'm sure wan isn't happy with what's going on, but that's football at the end of the day. If a manager doesn't want to play you, that's that's the situation you're in. And similar kind of to Ronaldo, obviously I'm happy Ronaldo's here because we need him. Without Martial, we need him 100%. 
But Eric Ten Hag was open to letting Cristiano Ronaldo go in the summer if Ronaldo had a club that was offering to, to come and get him. They didn't have a club that we wanted to pay a fee because of how big his wages are. Man United demanded a fee. Therefore, he didn't leave. So realistically, should have we just let Ronaldo go in the summer for free and got someone in that Eric Ten Hag could maybe work with him for the future? I think potentially, yes, we should have done that, to be honest with you. I think it would have saved a lot of these difficult decisions that Eric Ten Hag's had to make and it would have been probably better for Ronaldo and better for the club but Ronaldo's here and to be honest I'm very happy with the way he's played the last couple of games so let's see what happens but I do think Ronaldo is definitely going to be on his way out. Moving to the goalkeeper situation it was interesting to see what Romano said and we definitely are scouting Costa from Porto and I think that is a big plus for everyone kind of thinking if we did get a new goalkeeper in to get someone like Costa, who I think is one of the best about at the moment, um, as in coming up into the goalkeeping, like to be the top goalkeeper, I think he's definitely someone that can move to a big club and, and will achieve that. He's got so much potential and he's playing very, very well for Porto as well. He's he, he's someone that I would want to get if we were to get a different keeper. But at the same time, I love the fact David De Gea is making it a really difficult decision for Eric Ten Hag because if you look at the way David De Gea has been playing this season, apart from them first two games he's played well he's played well and yesterday he played brilliantly like a top 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 performance his distribution was brilliant his saves and shot stopping are unbelievable I mean I think David Hay is the best shot stopper in the league if it was just based on shot stopping I've always complained about his distribution and coming off his line but he came off his line as well yesterday and I think if he plays like that it's going to be a very difficult decision for Eric Ten Hag especially because David knows the club so well he he loves the club he knows the fans like I'm not saying that that is a reason you'd keep someone but I think someone that's kind of been here when when Ferguson was here and been here for so long and knows the culture and knows what this club needs can also be kind of a role model in the dressing room I think that's something that's really really important in dressing rooms so we'll see what happens but I mean maybe you, you can't have the situation where you bring Costa in and it's like another Henderson to Haye situation where you know one of them should be playing one of them's on the bench and it's just like if someone comes in it's either to take David Haye's place or it's just a number two that needs to be quite clear but we'll have to see and, and wait what happens I think David De Gea is, is kind of I'm glad he's been so open about the fact he wants to stay and wants a new contract. I mean, of course he wants a new contract, 300, 350 grand a week. I think anyone would want a new contract on that one. But he's performing really, really highly. So we'll have to see if he, he carries on that level. If he carries on that level, what he's doing now, I can't see us getting a new keeper to replace him. If he kind of drops off again and, and, and goes back to maybe the way he was playing against Brentford and Brighton, then we probably will get a new keeper. I think... Eric Ten Hag is going to monitor him quite closely. But as Romano said, he's been speaking glowingly about David De Gea. So I think I think he will stay, but we'll have to wait and see and, and see what happens on that one. And then also we talked about Declan Rice and said that, obviously, I thought the way he spoke about United yesterday in Old Trafford, I think he spoke similarly last season when he came and, and, and did an interview. Obviously, it was nothing like he wasn't, begging for a move or anything like that absolutely not he was just saying that Old Trafford's a great place to play and obviously a lot of big names have played here and just kind of speaking highly of it which I think he's good to see players come and do that because obviously he remembers the history at Manchester United and we are the biggest club in the world and the fact we are I'm not saying Declan Rice is, 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 is wants to move to Manchester United by saying that but the fact that we are kind of on this path now this season and you can visibly see the improvements you can visibly see the changes on the pitch we bring in the likes of Anthony Martinez Casemiro you can see the the kind of togetherness of the squad and people hugging after the games and celebrating tackles and I love that and you can see like the players believe in the manager we're winning games we look so much harder to beat than once we than what we once were and the quality of the players have just massively improved because of the, the the likes of players that we've brought in. I mean, Christian Eriksen as well, he's made such a difference. So I think players look at us now or are starting to look at us now as, I mean, last season, no no one wanted to really touch us with a barge pole, if I'm being honest with you. Anyone that wanted to play Champions League football, I think it was it was hard to bring players in. I think we did extremely well getting Martinez, Anthony and Casemiro, players that should be playing Champions League football realistically. And we did so well to get them in because our 
uh, the, the name, the badge and Eric Ten Hag definitely does carry weight. Like the manager, Eric Ten Hag, carried weight in them decisions. And also the fact we are the biggest club in the world with the, with one of the best fan bases. Like I think the best fan base. So that carries weight. But it was getting to a point where if we were consistently in and out of Europe and we were having these poor seasons. And now you can see that Manchester United with Eric Ten Hag, I personally believe, are definitely on the way up. Pep Guardiola said it, said it himself. We're coming back and not to the level of Manchester City or anything like that, but you can definitely see improvements. And I do think this manager is someone that can definitely take us to the next level. And players will recognise that. So this, again, is why it's so, so important to get top four this season, which I definitely think we can. If we carry on the way we're going, I think we can get top four. And it just opens so many doors for us. I mean, we just spoke about De Jong then. Barcelona would sell him. Romano made that quite clear. If an offer came in and De Jong said he wanted to go, Barcelona would want to cash in on De Jong. De Jong is definitely an option for Manchester United next summer. But there isn't a chance he's coming to Manchester United without Champions League football. Well, he made that clear. I mean, maybe he might rethink his decision after Barca again drops into the Europa League. But, I mean, I, I personally... I'm against, I'm not against, but I wouldn't want to get De Jong now. I think too much has happened and the way he's kind of always been for Barcelona and, and disregarded Manchester United is, I don't know. I, I just feel like if, if a player wants to come, they want to come. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't want us to sit here around here begging any player to come to the club. So we'll see what happens with it. I definitely think we will go back into him, him for him because that's what Eric Ten Hag wants to do. But looking even at strikers next year in, in, in summer, Fabrizio said we want to go for a number nine again. The fact of the matter is we're only getting a very decent striker if we get Champions League football because that's the way the world works. I mean, Nunes probably went to Liverpool. That would have been a big, big, big factor in it. And people say that's worked out well for the best. I do think Nunes is going to be a great player, I've got to admit. I think I can see potential there in him. I can I can definitely see, see something in Nunes. But we can get a number nine that is brilliant that summer there's not many on offer right now but if you want to get an Ossiman you want to get a Tony you want to get someone of, of, a, of a high quality you want to be in Champions League football so it's important that we do that and to do that we need to invest in January we need a right back if Dallow gets injured we are literally screwed because he's so important to this team this year from that right back spot so we need a right back desperately. I mean, Ten Hag. I love the fact, by the way, that Ten Hag came out and and, and said, I need two more full backs. I don't think we need a left back. Um, Luke Shaw and Malcy are definitely good enough. And But we do need a right back. And the fact he's coming out and saying that puts a little bit of pressure on the club because he's told everyone that that's what he wants. If that doesn't happen, everyone will know that the club have not gone forward with his wishes in that sense. And honestly, with the Wambazaka situation... I personally would be looking to just get ready in January. If it has to be a loan, then buy at the end of the season, loan with option to buy, get it done. He's not going to play. We need to bring a right back in. And I like Sergio Des, but I like the idea of Frimpong a, a, a lot more. Again, it's someone I need to watch more closely. But from what I've seen of him and what I've heard, he seems like a, a good player and, and, and very good at getting forward, which is what Eric Ten Hag wants. And he wants someone that's going to be good on the ball. But we'll have to see what happens. Get in the comments down below. I might just went off there. Sorry, guys. But get in the comments down below whether you think Cristiano Ronaldo will come, sorry, will leave Old Trafford in January or whether you think he'll go at the end of the season. Do you see Manchester United signing a right back in January? Do you see them following what Eric Ten Hag wants, in a sense? We know he's doing so, so well so far. We know the board are very happy with the way he's doing. Other clubs make deals in January that puts a lot of pressure on United to do so because if we're chasing top four, that could be the difference whether we get it or not. So I think just got to put pressure on Manchester United to kind of do some business in January. I mean, if we got Gakpo in a right back, that would be brilliant in January. I think that would be exactly what we need right now. Wait for that number nine if we have to in the summer and maybe look at getting another midfielder in, like a box-to-box -box midfielder. But I think... The priorities are a right back and, and a forward player, 100%. That, that's what the priorities are. But we'll have to see what happens. Again, if Ronaldo doesn't leave, I don't think we'll get Gakpo. If Ronaldo leaves, I think we'll get Gakpo. I think like that domino effect Romano was talking about will definitely, will definitely happen and we'll have to see what 
what happens and, and, and whether Ronaldo does move, whether wan moves and see who we can get in. But get in the comments who you would like. Would you want Gakpo? Would you rather wait for someone like a Tony? Do you want Fring Pong? Is there anyone else that's on your radar? And of course, thank you to Fabrizio for coming on and doing the interview. But thank you everybody for watching and make sure you get your comments in down below. We'll read through them. Make sure you like. And if you're not already, make sure you subscribe. I'll see you on the next one.